the following brands have in one way or another contributed to this video. Hey everyone, my name is Max and in this video I'm gonna show you how to find out if the pedal is true bypass. Generally, there are two types of bypass circuits. Active bypass and the opposite of it, passive bypass. And whatever we call true bypass is actually the special case of the passive type. And by the way, the opposite of true bypass is not gonna be false bypass, it's gonna be the active bypass. There are plenty of videos online which tell you why you would want to use true or active bypass in certain situations, but usually none of them explain how to figure out which kind of bypass your pedal has. So let's fill the gap. There are a few different ways to figure out what kind of bypass the pedal has, but the very first thing you can do is to take a closer look at the foot switch. Very often, true bypass pedals will have a latching foot switch, and when you press on it, you will feel it change between two different positions with a specific sound. Pedals with active bypass usually, but not always, have a momentary switch that sounds and feels completely different. In both cases, there are exceptions, like this pedal, for example, has a momentary switch, and it's completely silent, but it is a true bypass pedal. The same here, this is a momentary switch, but this is a true bypass pedal, and it's even explicitly written on it. And here's the opposite situation, this pedal has a latching foot switch, but an active bypass. Okay, there is no way to tell, judging by the foot switch alone, so let's go to the next step. This is gonna be a very easy test anyone can perform at home, and all you need to do is to make sure that there is no power supply to the pedal. To do that, simply unplug the power cord or remove the battery if there is any. Now that there is no power, connect your guitar to the pedal and the pedal to the amp. Passive bypass doesn't require any power, which means even without a battery or a power cord connected, a pedal with a passive or true bypass, when disengaged, will let the signal through without any alteration. On the other side, if there is no sound coming out of your speaker, no matter how many times you press the foot switch, you can definitely tell that the pedal has an active bypass. Just like this one. So, using this method, you can rule out pedals for the active bypass, but when it comes to the passive type, it gets a little bit tricky, because this method will not be able to tell you if it is actually a true bypass, only that it is a passive type. Here's the thing, in a true bypass pedal, when the pedal is off, the input has to be routed directly to the output without any interference or any other components connected to the signal chain inside of the pedal. But in some pedals with passive bypass, even though the sound easily goes through without any power involved, some part of the circuit always stays connected to the signal chain, and that may affect the tone a little bit, therefore these kind of pedals don't count as true bypass. For example, in this pedal, the cabinet simulation section always stays connected to the signal chain, and a little bit later in this video I'll show you the difference in measurements between this pedal and a true bypass pedal. Now let's talk about the other method which I usually use in my videos, and for that you're gonna need a multimeter, which is a device like this. It is used to measure different stuff in electronic circuits. I have two of them because this one will measure resistance, and this one will measure capacitance. The first part is actually very similar to the previous test, with the only difference that instead of the guitar sound, we will be passing some electricity through the pedal and measuring the resistance between the input and the output when the pedal is disengaged, of course. And if it is zero, or close to zero, as it is right now, or, in other words, the signal simply passes through the pedal, that means the pedal has a passive bypass, possibly a true bypass. Otherwise, it is an active or buffered bypass. Okay, that's zero, very good. The other thing you want to measure is the resistance between the tip and the ground. And if there is absolutely no signal passing through, as it is right now, that would be a good sign that this is a true bypass pedal. And here's the pedal I've mentioned earlier. Even though it has a passive bypass, there is something going on between the tip and the ground, as you can see, so it is not a true bypass pedal. 
And finally, to prove our expectations, I will measure the capacitance again between the tip and the ground of the output when the pedal is disengaged. There will be some capacitance, but it shouldn't be higher than just a few picofarad. So when I set the device into this position, it's going to be zero. Together with previous measurements, this zero reading confirms that this indeed is a true bypass pedal. With an active or buffered bypass, you're not going to get zero reading here. In fact, the capacity is pretty high, as it is with this pedal and this one. And here is once again this pedal with that suspicious passive bypass. As you can see, the capacitance is pretty far from zero, so even though it is passive, it is definitely not true bypass. Well, there is actually one more method I have to mention, but it requires opening the pedal, tracing the circuit and some additional knowledge. So it's kind of more complicated and, well, I believe the easier one with measuring inputs and outputs should definitely do the job for you. So now we know how to find out if the pedal is true bypass. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button right there and don't forget about the bell button to get notifications every time I'm posting a new video. A special thanks goes to people in the list below. Those are my patrons. If you want to say thanks, hit the button on the left and join the list. Well, that's it for now. Have a good day and I'll see you soon.